Hello, everyone. Meghan Markle and Harry are lying about the real reason the chief of staff quit. Let me see how Meghan will survive. I am more excited than ever. I hope everyone stays calm and watches this video until the end. I am afraid that everyone will be so mad that they want to slap Harry and Meghan in the face right away because of their shamelessness. Oh my goodness, let's get into this crazy, shall we? Since Meghan Markle and Prince Harry have just been discovered lying about why their chief of staff resigned. Now, I learned yesterday that their chief of workers may have departed due to Meghan's alleged bullying tactics with her workers. Many others have been thinking the same thing, especially since the news of their chief of staff's resignation came out of nowhere only a few days before their Columbia trip. A source in California informed the Daily Mail simply, Josh Kettler, the chief of staff, is no longer working for them, with no other reason at the moment. Since then, Meghan and Harry have developed their own rationale for why this chief of staff resigned. But guess what? It truly doesn't make sense. And let me explain why, conspiracy theory or not. Now, the mainstream media is calling them out on this excuse, claiming that Meghan and Harry are attempting to downplay why their chief of staff has resigned. And this is practically all from People magazine. Of course, Meghan and Harry's favorite site, part of their PR machine in my opinion, where the title reportedly reads, Prince Harry's chief of staff departs after three months following a mutual agreement. Josh Kettler, the Duke of Sussex's chief of staff, has departed his role after three months. People realized that they were employed on a trial basis and the choice to part ways was mutual, with both parties recognizing it was not the right match. Simply, simply, how would anyone know this? How would they know this information? If there is a conspiracy theory, it has come from Meghan and Harry because they observed the reaction to the unexpected resignation of the chief of workers, all the suspicion that it may be due to Meghan's reported style of bullying her workers, and they are now attempting to downplay it. Do you find Meghan disgusting? If so, comment number one, and then boycott her. I want to see people boycott that ambitious, crazy woman. The feeling of, oh no, no, it was only a trial basis. The decision for him to leave was mutual. We both agreed on both sides. It just wasn't the right fit. Blah, blah. Now, here's the question. Why, in my view, conspiracy theory. Whatever, were Meghan and Harry caught lying with that specific explanation? You can't make this up. People have screwed them royally. And so only a few months ago, when they were reporting on Meghan and Harry's Nigerian trip, this was said in that particular article. Back home in Montecito, Meghan will continue to champion her endeavors, including her new lifestyle brand, American Riviera Orchard, whilst Harry's new chief of staff, Josh, Kettler prepares to guide him through his next phase. So, here's my problem and query. Okay, if Meghan and Harry turn around and say, Oh, well, he was only hired on a trial basis, and after three months, yeah, the decision was mutual to part ways. Then, put simply, does it really take three months to shepherd Harry through his next phase? I would assume it would take a lot longer than that, for Harry to be guided through his next phase. Since the only important thing that has happened in the previous three months, in terms of Harry's, I don't know what you'd call it, a career of some type, right, is the Nigerian journey. He's continuing filming for the Polo Scenario on Netflix. Nothing further of significance or notice, such as the Pinnacus Percy idea, has emerged. So, Josh Kettler, this chief of staff, was supposed to shepherd him through his next phase, but he departed after just three months. Since it was a trial period, people, again, I believe it will take more than three months to shepherd Harry through his next phase. And here's the issue. Guys, people are seeing through Harry and Meg's excuse for why the chief of staff resigned, and they are calling him and them out on it. So, Richard Eden, the Daily Mail diary editor and presenter, claims that when Josh Kettler was hired, People magazine trumpeted his significance to Harry, as I've just shown you. Now it maintains he was just recruited on a trial basis. This is an insult to Kettler and its readers. Hell yes, because we have long memories. In addition, Tribes Britannia has stated unequivocally that Harkel's excuse 
that he was just recruited on a trial basis is a lie. When Kettler was hired, Harry and Meghan told the press that he was Prince Harry's right-hand man and was vital to the Sussexes. Now, they're claiming it was a trial. The truth is that Harry and Meghan are lazy bullies, and no one wants to work with them. Again, this is simply a conspiracy idea, right? And now, let's return to Richard Eden, who is calling out certain reporters on this. I love Richard Eden's savagery, since Jack Royston tweeted that, yeah, Josh Kettler departed three months into the position due to mutual consent on a hired basis. Richard Eden turned around and said, what evidence do you have that he was hired on a trial basis, Jack? Oh, where's the receipt? Where is the receipt? Exactly. Where is the proof that he was employed on a trial basis when it was first revealed, literally via People magazine, that Josh Kettler had been appointed as Harry's chief of staff to assist him through his next phase? Again, as I've stated, it takes more than three months to assist someone through their next level, especially during these three months, when, other than the Nigerian trip, nothing noteworthy has occurred. Correct? Come on, come on. He's Harry's right-hand guy, and he's attempting to steer him into his next phase. Hmm. Okay, let's put it this way. If the decision to split ways was amicable, why were there so many stories about him quitting? That he quit? Normally, the headline would be, if this is true. As far as I'm concerned, the chief of staff has parted ways with Meghan and Harry by mutual consent. But no, the chief of staff resigns. Guys, something is awry and it stinks to high heaven here to go full circle. The chief of staff has resigned. According to recent news, soon after, Meghan and Harry tried to minimize the situation by turning back and saying, oh, no, no, no. He was employed on a three-month trial basis. We agreed that he would go by mutual consent. Blah, 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 blah. Even though he was appointed three months ago to much hoopla, he turns around and says, he's there to lead Harry through his next phase. Certainly, I believe it would take more than three months to shepherd someone through their next step. And if he did depart with mutual accord, why don't the headlines reflect that? Why do the headlines claim he quit rather than that he departed by mutual consent? Make it make sense. Men, I think professionals with any code of ethics never stay on with these two because they are clearly corrupt and unethical. Maybe after so many years, an NDA is no longer in force. They can write their book about working with these two. We all know they are lying. They are freaking out about how bad it looks that another one quit on them. This should be a blinking red light to anyone thinking of accepting a job from them. I'm sure the Sugars would still jump at the chance to work for her. Maybe only then will they see how twisted she actually is. And the disastrous interview with Jane Pauley. I bet the backlash from the interview had them seeing red and blaming staff. Can you imagine working for them and being blamed for all of their poor choices? Especially if you previously advised them to take a different course. It would be never-ending. Ah, I think Meghan is going to try to stage an incident in Colombia, akin to the New York City car chase, so that Harry and her can say to the home office, look how much danger we're in. Pay for our security for the rest of our lives. Perhaps Josh has found out and just can't stomach being party to such a deception. I hope he has the receipts and it all comes out after their trip. Does anyone want to bet Meghan is going to try something? Let's vote. If you think so, comment. Yes, and if you don't believe Meghan would do it, comment no. I really don't know what kind of world I am in anymore. What's happened in the last three months? Nigerian Vaka, Epsi Award, ITV interview, CBS 10 min section. I'd be willing to bet Mr. Kettler warned Harry not to do any of those things, and Harry and Meghan wouldn't listen. Then they pop up to do the Colombian Vaka, and the guy can read just as we can about things not being safe, but they plot ahead anyway, and this man said, enough. True anything that goes wrong. And that's also why I say in Colombia, it will, they will drop it on him. He has probably tried to get them to be safe and cancel this trip, but Meghan needs her false royal tour. After all, the Duchess must have her moment to shine. And since the Commonwealth sided with King Charles, they had to take 
whatever came her way. Columbia was the best she could get. The only time they're not lying is when their mouths are shut. Watching Karma at its finest, it's about time if they have lost 18 staff members in six years, that's an employee gone every four months. Let's step back and try to see who is the problem. They always lie. Something else happened, and now they're gaslighting us. This man is super professional and talented, and they are doing a trial run. The royal family couldn't guide Harry over a period of 30 plus years. So how could they expect to guide him in three months? They lie every time they open their mouth. I have never known him to tell the truth. They're either lying or whining one of the two. The chief of staff couldn't even wait until their Colombian trip was over to Bolt. Executives at this guy's level are not hired on a trial basis. He quit the grifters to save his reputation. Certainly, nothing to really do since they're both unemployed, unemployable, and grifting isn't a dependable full-time career since people see right through them and know their crooked game, so they avoid them. This story is going on, which can be understood as a professional trying to work with a pair of ranked amateurs, probably realizing that they are a lost cause. Okay, Harry's next phase is puberty, so I wish luck to anyone who takes on that job. As I know, there is no such thing as a three-month trial basis for high-level executives. There would have been several meetings and vetting before even hiring a person on that level. This exec would be privy to sensitive information. And although there's always an NDA, I don't think the Harkles would put themselves in that position for a temporary employee. Dominic Reed of Invictus also left mutually. These departures are at pivotal times in advance of such important events as the Columbia trip and Invictus. Makes no sense at all. What do you think about the topics I just discussed? I would love to see your comments below. Thank you for watching and supporting us. I really appreciate it. Support us more by liking, sharing, and ringing the bell to subscribe to the channel. Now, goodbye and see you again.